I wanted to talk about a couple of things. Obviously, these tactics can be used for any sort of, especially like lead generation, or anything, anything with e-commerce. All of this stuff is going to be applicable, this aspect of storytelling. But that's clear. But I wanted to just get your take on where the personality marketing space is right now. Like, there's, it's, it's a really interesting. It's like everyone in the world could have something to teach potentially. So I, I, I don't think it's saturated to that extent. But that being said, there's still a new information person pointing to a bridge or talking from a Bentley or, or doing one of these things every day. There's a new one that I see. Talk a little bit about where you see this industry going. Yeah, so authenticity and, and the character itself that's teaching you know, for example, uh, there's a lot of people who teach the same thing. And what gravitates students towards the different personality types out there are just who the person is that they're learning from. Uh, does this person share comment? It's the same thing in real life. You know, why are you friends with certain people and not friends with others? Uh, even though that both of those people, one that you're friends with and one that you're not friends with, might like the same things, do the same things, have the same hobbies, et cetera. It's because we're attracted to different personality types and we're, and we're not attracted to other personality types. So there's not, there's not going to be a time where it becomes saturated. Um, and even better than that, just to, just to further my point, uh, back in the day, okay, for centuries, not, not for a few years, for centuries, how did people learn? Maybe the library or, maybe, you know, like or apprenticeship and mentors. Yeah. That was it. You would, you would go to a master, okay? If I if I wanted to learn how to make a sword or if I wanted to learn how to how to build a home and become a mason, oh, if I wanted to learn anything, yeah. I wouldn't go to there's no school for that shit back in the day, okay? You're in you're in a village of like maybe ten people or fifty people, hundreds of people. Imagine the Wild West. Okay, if I want to learn a concept, there's not a place where I can go and get indoctrinated for, you know, my my fifth grade all the way up to my high school career level, just learning the same things as everybody else is in the same country. You know, this is a new system. I want to be clear. Like everything that we're doing in modern times for education is is literally brand fucking new. If you go back and you actually look at when the education system was created, not to not to bring up Rockefeller, but you know, since you since you plugged the Illuminati already, uh, the education system itself was created to stimulate an economy of factory workers and very labor intensive driven skills. It was yes, not, sir. It was not created for empowering people mentally and making them understand that entrepreneurship is a possibility. I had a 16 year old the other day that walked up to me at this event I spoke at and he was like, dude, I made a million dollars last year and you know, I'm just having trouble focusing. Like, what should I do? And I think in my head, I'm like, dude, there's, there's doctors that are getting paid 200 K 250 K a year. You know, how, how did you learn that? Did you learn that stuff in school? You know, of course not. The guy learns it from taking courses from that, from answering and asking mentors. So to be very direct, uh, you know, a personality brand, it's tough to be able to, just like school, get results for people when you have tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of students. So there's not going to be a point of saturation because what will happen with education is we will go back to what it's already been, which is masters and, uh, and apprenticeships rather than these large sum education games where we're just putting people in classrooms in bulk and expecting them to learn these, these concepts and principles out there. So to be clear, um, you know, everybody who knows something that is actually certain about it they're going to have an opportunity to transition that knowledge to somebody, but if they're paid for it, you know, they can, they can monetize that at scale and really duplicate and digitize that action nowadays, especially with the internet. Um, and that's, that's the power of why personality branding is going to continue becoming more effective is because there's so much scale potential on the internet rather than back in the day, as I talked about where everything was so you know limited and tight knit and, and you couldn't communicate around. <laughs> and because things, this is what I love about the people that I, that have, that, that, that comes speak at these shows. You're, what are you, you're 24? Yeah, 24, yeah. You're 24, yeah, you're 24. Yeah, just all these people, and it's like, they've all become experts through a mentor process, and but also through trial and error themselves. 100%. And, and that's what I love, is like, everyone can develop their own expertise. You take in a little bit from there, you take a little bit in from there, and, yeah. and all of a sudden you're like, I'm a pioneer. Like, I'm a total pioneer in this space with what I've just done. Because, because Facebook's rolling out new things that, that could that you can learn to master like you know every quarter kind of thing and then, yeah, and so I, I, I totally agree with what you're saying because it's like there are a lot you know a lot of people the instant reaction would be like oh there's a lot of gurus out there oh there's a lot of personalities out there yep. but it's just getting as you said this Absolutely. form of like democratization or digitalization of education is just beginning. A hundred percent. You know, as yeah. as I described, just being attracted to one personality type and not being attracted to another will always lead to additional opportunities for people to continue expanding and growing and scaling their personal brands. Uh, we're decades away from any kind of issues like that. And in actuality, with more technology becoming available to us and with, with it being easier for us to digitize ourselves nowadays, 
there'll probably be a time in maybe 10, 20 years where the window will slim comparatively to the opportunity that there is now. Uh, but to be clear, you know, every day there's new people that are just becoming certain on what they know and whether they're a teacher that has thousands of students or they just got their first student and they're teaching somebody. It doesn't matter because the point of it is not profits. The point of it is helping people and just really making people more aware and bringing more skills into others' lives, which every, I mean, we need to do that right now considering the shifts that are happening across all industries. So think about this. We're in an echo chamber. You know, An echo chamber by just pure principle is people participating in one given community, whether they can see how big that is or not. It's just one given community that we're all participating in right now. Everybody watching this video, you're, you're deep in the game. Like you're deep in the echo chamber because you know, you're already learning these advanced and intermediate tips. And for you to even understand the first part of this conversation, you have to have such a foundation of knowledge already. But consider this, there are still like 99% of the entire world is still not making money actively on the internet. They don't have digital skills. Um, so to be clear, <laughs> we're in such a small echo chamber, we can't confuse ourselves and think that we've already hit anywhere near the cap or the potential. You know, there'll be a time where the majority becomes digital, right? <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and a lot of people, and I'm, I'm guilty of this too. Like Tim says, I've been in the industry for 13 years and I, I think I know, I know a fuck ton of stuff, yep. <laughs> but, but, I, but sometimes I feel there's a certainty that I, it's, 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 I, and you, you sort of pinpointed it there saying, you know, the stuff that you know, you're certain about yep. what, 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 what's a process by which it's almost like a, it, it goes back to a bit of those like psychological uh, you know, mindset things of, of real, like how do people help themselves become more certain that they are certain of things? Well, if, I, if I've never done what it is that I know, I'm not going to be as certain about it because I know it, but I haven't validated that knowledge. Okay. So the process of validating the knowledge that we have is what breeds certainty. You can be confident about something, but you can't be certain about something unless you validated that knowledge. And there's, there's several different ways to do that. Uh, one thing I picked up from Robert Kiyosaki, he put out this, uh, he called it the cone of learning, and it, and it showed the passive learning mediums and the active learning mediums and the probability of us retaining it uh, from choosing one route or another for learning things. For example, reading, you have a 10% probability of retaining information. Although I read two to three hours a day, I mean, still, uh, you know, other, others will have higher probabilities if you turn around and then teach that information or if you simply teach yourself. So as an example, especially nowadays with all the digital skills that we're picking up, uh, all the new things that can be learned, you know, immediately go and validate the skill. Get a client that you can do it with. Try it on your own brands and companies. Uh, more importantly than anything else, to kind of hack the process. Leverage the power of community to talk to other people that have already done it. To continue feeding yourself with data to validate what you know. So validating data can be done in many ways. It can be done with your own hands and it can be done by practically putting things to use. But in addition to that, it can be communicated and with somebody else validating the reality that you're trying to make sense of, you know, all of, all of a sudden you're at a level of certainty that you wouldn't have been able to do without that. So that, that can really, that can really hack that process, but it's definitely, it's definitely multiple steps. You know, it's not just, I, I know something now and now I'm just all of a sudden going to be cer certain and confident about it. It's validating what we know that makes certainty possible. That's very cool. All right. Well, I think that's a really good uh, background on, on who you are and what you're about. I don't know if Tim wants to pop back in here, but I'm, I wanted to know even just just even a little more nutshell for us. What will you be bringing to the table at uh, Facebook and e-commerce mastery live in Las Vegas? Yeah, so I'm excited. So as I said, I did over 80 million dollars.